So the next test is the PBH test, which is Popov, Belbridge and Hottest test for the stabilizability. So for stabilizability, one can also reformulate the, in fact, this is what we have defined the PBH test as an elegant restatement of the eigenvector test that the continuous time system is stabilizable if and only if this rank condition is satisfied for all lambdas belonging to the set of complex numbers such that the real part of those lambda is greater than or equal to 0. Right? <coughs> so if you recall the, uh, the result for the controllability, this condition was not there while testing the rank condition. But for stabilizability as we had seen in the eigenvector test that we are only concerned with the eigenvalues which are on the right hand side. So again for stabilizability we are concerned only with the eigenvalues which are on to the right hand side. Okay. So for the discrete time system we would have the same result but those eigenvalues should be outside the unit circle or on the boundary of that unit circle. So the proof of this theorem is analogous to the earlier proof that is the, contr the controllability proof except that now we need to restrict our attention to only the unstable portion of the set of complex numbers where the eigenvalues lies. Okay, so we won't be going through the proof of this PBH test but if we want to determine the stabili uh, stabilizability directly from the given AB pair, first of all we will compute the eigenvalues of the A matrix and then only for the eigenvalues which are on the right hand side we will carry out this test. Okay. The last test is the Lyapunov test for stabilizability. It says that the system is stabilizable if and only if there is a positive definite uh, solution P to the following Lyapunov matrix inequality. Okay, so this is in the continuous time and this is in the uh, discrete time domain. If we are having this pair AB coming from the discrete time system. And we term this as an LMI which is a linear matrix inequality. So let's see the quick proof for this result. So the first implication is that the LMI has a positive definite solution matrix P <coughs> uh, which implies that the pair AB is stabilizable. So again we would be using this eigenvector test to prove this part. So there are two assumptions here which the first one is already given here that the LMI has a positive definite solution P. It means that this that LMI holds. Okay, the second part is that there is a non-zero vector x which happens to be the eigenvector of A transpose associated with the unstable eigenvalue lambda that is A transpose x is equal to lambda x. Okay. <coughs> so forming the quadratic form of the left hand side of the Lyapunov equation. So this was we were having on the left hand side and then using that eigenvector we form this x star. Uh, this matrix into x which should be less than <coughs> or in fact is less than uh, x star b b transpose x and using the property of the matrix uh, the norms i can write this as the squared norm of b transpose x okay so where star we already know that it denotes the complex conjugate transpose so see now proceeding in a similar way what we had done for the Lyapunov test in the controllability this right hand side part we have represented by a star uh, a transpose x star transpose which would be nothing but your x star and a p x okay and on this side since a transpose x star is would be equal to lambda star x star similarly here we would have um, a transpose x is equal to lambda x and since lambda being scalar I can take them on to the left uh, to the I can commute them which finally I would have the twice of real part of lambda into x star p x. Okay so see this part which is pretty much important so since p is positive definite 
and we know that the real part of lambda is either greater than or equal to 0 we can conclude that this twice of real part of lambda x star px would definitely be less than of squared norm because squared norm is positive hmm? p is a positive definite already so this part would be positive definite but since uh, lambda we are having <coughs> on the on to the right hand side which is also positive but from this inequality this linear matrix inequality we would have this less than part and which would always be greater than or equal to 0 okay? and therefore x must not belong to the kernel of b transpose if x happens to belong to the kernel of b transpose we would have b transpose x equal to 0 but it is not equal to 0. <coughs> the other direction of this implication that the AB is stabilizable implies that LMI has a positive definite solution. So we already know that the pair AB is stabilizable and if AB is stabilizable we can decompose it into the controllable part and the uncontrollable part and stabilizable meaning to say that all the eigenvalues are on the left hand side. So we will go step by step. So first of all we from the controllability of the pair AC and BC we have this Lyapunov equation in the context of the controllability. Hmm? This is one of the results where Q's hmm? where we have this uh, BC BC transpose. Okay. And PC is a positive definite solution satisfying this equation. Now on the other hand, since AU is a stability matrix, so it is already assumed in this implication that the pair AB is stabilizable, so all the eigenvalues are already on to the left hand side and AU is a stability matrix. Now using the Lyapunov stability theorem, we can write this, we can write this uh, LMI <coughs> okay. in terms of AU and PU and PU is a positive definite solution of this equation. So this equation we basically have written from the stability result and this equation we have result from the controllability result with different AC, PC and AU, PU pair. Okay. So now we define another matrix P bar <coughs> which is given by the elements PC and row PU on the diagonals and 0 on the off diagonal. So where rho is some positive scalar uh, variable or parameter. So let's see uh, this part for the complete equation which is in the result in fact. Okay. So this is in the result so we need to show that this LMI has a positive definite solution P. Okay. So let's take the left hand side of that equation and start putting those matrices what we had obtained. Hmm? A bar is basically this one if I write all these matrices explicitly P bar we are introducing we are defining this matrix P bar and similarly B bar I can write this BC. <coughs> now simplifying them I would have AC into PC plus PC into AC transpose minus BC into BC transpose which is nothing but minus of QC. So here I would have uh, QC and I taken the minus sign outside of this matrix. Okay. <coughs> so similarly see this part we would have A12 rho PU here and the rest would be 0 and with a negative sign because we have taken the negative sign outside. Another of diagonal element we would have AU rho into P. Uh, sorry this one so here we would have this would be 0 and this would be rho pu into a transpose 1 2 <coughs> okay and seeing the last element we would have rho is a scalar so i can write au pu plus pu into au transpose 
which is nothing but minus q u so i obtain this matrix okay with the row multiplication now in order to show so see this matrix this matrix first of all is a symmetric matrix because the off diagonal elements are equal okay or let's say if I, in fact if i take the transpose of this matrix of this matrix i would obtain in fact this equivalent okay now the second part <coughs> qc we have defined already is a positive definite matrix okay qu which we have obtained from the uncontrollable part is a positive definite matrix okay now i can choose row u a very small value which is already a positive such that the diagonal elements would be positive if it is a positive and it is symmetric then the entire matrix would be a positive definite matrix hmm? and this positive definite matrix can be can be written which was given in the main result being this matrix a positive definite matrix we would have the right hand side the negative definite okay <clears throat> now since this p bar is that transformed matrix of the of the transformed system so in order to obtain the p matrix of the original pair ab again i using this t transformation matrix i could obtain this p and you can verify that this p matrix satisfy that uh, linear matrix inequality which is given in the result okay so this completes the the proof <coughs> so additional result we have on the controllability that so far we have uh, so in the first week we discuss the continuous to discrete time transformation given a continuous time system so we need to sample our system at some sampling time t to finally obtain this discrete time system if the discrete time system is already given to us okay then we had studied different test to carry out whether the system is controllable or whether the system is stabilizable now we had separate test for the continuous time system also but now the here the problem is if i use the continuous to discrete transformation given a continuous time system so what can i comment on to its controllability okay so if you recall from the first week <coughs> so we had studied two ways of doing the discretization the first one is using the euler method and the second one by assuming that uk is some piecewise constant signal between this time interval okay so but when we assume that u is a piecewise constant given by this one we obtain this discrete time representation where a bar and b bar we have explicitly computed using this a bar is given by e to the power a into the sampling time and b bar is given by m into b <coughs> where m is the uh, uh, this part okay so now the problem here is which we want to address that if the pair a b is controllable will its sample equation which is given after doing the c to d continuous discrete conversion is controllable okay so we'll see the answer to this problem <coughs> in fact this problem is quite important in designing the so called dead beat sample data systems in the computer control of uh, continuous time systems So let lambda i and lambda i bar be respectively the eigen values of a and a bar. So here note that when so this a bar, I should have written this uh, a d, which is the discrete time matrix of the continuous time matrix. So here a bar is not the transform matrix, algebraically equivalent transform matrix. Huh? So whenever I'm speaking of this a bar in the context of controllability after sampling, this a bar is the discrete time counterpart of the uh, continuous time matrix. A. So lambda i is the eigen value of this, and lambda i bar is the eigen value of a bar. <coughs> so this is the result. Let's suppose that the continuous time pair a b is controllable. 
so a sufficient condition for the discretized equation with sampling time t to be controllable is that the diff the imaginary part of the difference of two eigenvalues lambda i and lambda j of the continuous time system is not equal to 2 pi into m by t where m is a positive integer <coughs> whenever the real part of the difference of two eigenvalues is zero okay so for the single input case this condition is necessary as well but for the multiple input case this condition is only a sufficient condition okay so we won't be going through the proof of this uh, uh, result but we'll see various implication of this result so first of all notice here that if the eigenvalues <coughs> of the a matrix are only on the let's see what could be the possible cases so this is my s plane now if all the eigenvalues are on to the real axis okay let's say we have the eigenvalues here or if we have the eigenvalues anywhere okay if we have the eigenvalues here then it means that the system would always be controllable right because there won't be any imaginary part okay now this imaginary condition is for those eigenvalues which have a complex conjugate let's say i have one eigenvalue here and one eigenvalue here or one eigenvalue here and another eigenvalue here right because only in this and in this case we would we could have the difference the real part of the difference of two eigenvalues equal to zero right and only in those cases we would check the imaginary part of that difference if that imaginary part of the difference is not equal to 2 pi m by t where t is a sampling time then we say that the system is the discrete time system is also controllable okay <coughs> so it is straightforward to verify that if the matrix a has only real eigenvalues then the discretized equation with any sampling period t greater than greater than 0 is always controllable right so let's see <coughs> we have a complex conjugate pair of the matrix a now if the sampling period t does not equal to any integer multiple of pi by beta hmm? let's recall which is the the imaginary part of lambda i minus lambda j okay should not be equal to 2 pi m by t now the difference here the imaginary part we would have twice beta from here and this would should not be equal to 2 pi m by t which is equivalent to saying that t is not equal to a pi by beta or for m is equal to 1 okay so if it is not equal to the integer multiple of pi by beta then the discretized state equation is controllable but if it becomes equal to uh, pi by beta for some integer m then it only says that the syst or the discretized equation may not be controllable huh? be this is the because of that this is only a sufficient condition so if it satisfies if the results satisfied it means that the discrete time version is also controllable if it does not satisfy it does not mean that the system is not controllable okay it means that the system may not be controllable or be controllable so we can see the implication of the second point more precisely so first of all note that since a bar the discrete time uh, state matrix is equal to e to the power a into t where a is the continuous time matrix and t is a sample time if lambda i is an eigenvalue of a then lambda i bar which is equal to e to the power lambda i into t is an eigenvalue of a bar 
okay so you can take this as an exercise if you have any difficulty in visualizing this because both the matrices a and a bar are related by this one so the lambda i the eigenvalues are also related in a similar way okay. so see if t becomes equal to m pi by beta for some integer m or and given these two distinct eigenvalues alpha plus j beta and alpha minus j beta of a in fact become a repeated eigenvalue either of minus e to the power alpha t or e to the power alpha t of a bar okay. so we can quickly visualize this say for example take lambda is uh, lambda is equal to alpha plus j beta so the eigenvalue of the discrete time would be e to the power alpha plus j beta into the sample time so this i can write as e to the power alpha t uh, sorry it should be j e to the power alpha t times e to the power j beta t and t i already know is a multiple of m pi by uh, pi by beta so this would become e to the power alpha t times j m pi and this part is nothing but either it would be plus 1 or it would be minus 1 so that's why we it becomes a repeated eigenvalue of the discrete time state matrix Hmm. and this will cause the discrete time uh, equation to be uncontrollable so the last result we have that if the continuous time system is not controllable then its discrete state equation with any sampling period will never be controllable matrix right if the system the lti system is controllable then we had a test or we you could compute the sampling time also so that if your discrete time version of the state equation becomes controllable now if the original pair is not controllable then for any sampling period your discrete time version would never be uh, controllable 